want you to turn to two passages of Scripture this morning. Genesis chapter number 4 and Hebrews chapter number 11. Genesis chapter number 4 and Hebrews chapter number 11. Last time we looked at mankind's monumental calamity, the fall of man there in Genesis chapter number 3. Today we want to look at the very first hero of the faith. We know the heroes of the faith are mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11 where we're going to be. Uh, but uh, Abel is that first hero of the faith. He's Adam and Eve's second born son. Let's go ahead and, uh, and read the passage of Scripture in Genesis. Genesis 4 verse number 1 says, And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, in other words, uh, we don't, we're not told how long this time was, but there's, there was a point that where it came to this, okay? It came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And we have the very first murder. And not only the first murder, uh, mention of faith, but the first murder. And verse number 9, and, and the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. There's a lie. Okay. And am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. So we see Cain not wanting to take responsibility for having killed his brother. Imagine that. Hebrews 11, let's read uh, the text first this morning, uh, verse number 4. And it says here, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. The telling factor of Abel's conviction or his faith, according to Hebrews 11 and verse number 4, is found in the sacrifice that he offered. If you're familiar with the book of Hebrews, you should know that it tells us that the sacrifice of Christ on the cross of Calvary terminated the need for animal sacrifices that were established even before they were codified in the law of God. Now, I'm not going to take this the time to read the, the passage this morning. Uh, but there in Hebrews 9, if you want to read it when you get home, it talks about how the, uh, some of the things that we're talking about, the, how the, that the sacrifices were no longer needed uh, because of Christ's one supreme sacrifice for mankind's sin. And praise God, hallelujah for that. Because those old sacrifices could never take sin away. All they could do is just cover them for a spell. And, and they, were, they looked toward the cross of Christ. Look toward this one, uh, our Savior, who gave Himself a, a sacrifice for our sin. Now we know that God Himself was the first to sacrifice in order to clothe Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. We read about that in Genesis chapter number 3, verse 21. In order to provide coats of skin, you've got to slay an animal. And the Lord provided coats of skin for them that they... And uh, because the fig leaves were just weren't, weren't getting it. And so the Lord uh, covered their nakedness. And also Abel's sacrifice was the second sacrifice mentioned 
And it's the first sacrifice mentioned that was offered by mankind. Noah, we know Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, uh, they all sacrificed before the law of Moses came into effect. So we're talking about in the sacrifice, when we're talking about sacrifice, the blood sacrifices, they were established before the law of Moses. Understand that. And then the oldest book of Scripture, the, the book of Job, also mentions that Job offered sacrifices uh, uh, in case his children had sinned. And he was offering them on their behalf. Now, the writer of Hebrews tells us that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or forgiveness of sins. It also tells us that the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sin. We know that animal sacrifices were established by God as a temporary means uh, of mankind uh, covering uh, his sin and to point actually to the cross of Christ. Now, the, the, the finished work of Christ on the cross, understand, was sufficient and is sufficient for all of mankind's sins. But you've got, you got to have faith. You've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So all of the book of Hebrews gives us the end of the animal sacrificial system. That, the, the, the writer of Hebrews, he, he mentions that very point yeah, but Hebrews 11 and verse number 4 here uh, points back to the beginning of the animal sacrificial system uh, by Abel who offered, it says, a more excellent sacrifice than his brother Cain did. Now, let's think of some of the lessons of the animal sacrificial system as they point to the cross and then we're going to talk about uh, Abel's faith for a little while. Um, uh, first thing is uh, the, uh, the animal sacrificial system teaches us that all sin deserves a death penalty. All sin deserves a death penalty. And that's what God had told Adam and Eve there in the garden. He told Adam that uh, they, they ate of the, tr of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They would surely die. Sin deserves a death penalty. It, it teaches us also that the death penalty can be paid by a substitute can be paid by a substitute. And of course, Jesus is our substitute. Amen. And it teaches us that animal sacrifice cannot take away sin. It only provides a covering. If it could take away sin, then uh, you wouldn't have to continually offer them. As they did, they would offer them over and over again uh, from Genesis all the way until the Lord Jesus Christ came and offered that one sacrifice. There was continual the continual animal sacrifices that were going on. And then it teaches us that proper sacrifices were to be offered by faith. What Abel did, he did by faith. And that, that's the point this morning. Uh, so what do we need to see and understand about Abel's memorable conviction or his faith? First of all this morning, we see that Abel's sacrifice pointed to his faith in God. Look at Hebrews 11 verse number 6. This tells us, it says, but without faith it is impossible to please Him. Talking about pleasing God. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So Hebrews 11 6 points to a basic principle of a relationship with God. For able to please God, he had to come to God in faith, believing that he is, believing that God was, and, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, without faith, it's impossible to please God. <clears throat> that goes for anybody. Um, how do we know that Abel and Enoch and Noah believed in God and, and believed God? How, how do we know they had faith? And we're talking about the, you know, the, the our first three that are mentioned here in Hebrews chapter 11. How do we know they had faith? Well, for all three of these pre-flood saints, it's inferred in Genesis, but we are given details in the book of Hebrews. Now, Hebrews 11.6, understand, is an abiding principle. It's an abiding principle and, and that's uh, in general for all human beings at every era of human history. And that is this. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. That applied then. It still applies today. 
If you don't have faith, you're not going to please God. And so therefore, if Abel pleased God, he did it by faith. If Enoch pleased God, he did so by faith. If Noah built an ark, he did so to please God by faith. Uh, so it is a principle, an abiding and unchanging principle that mankind can only please God by faith. Now we see Abel's worship by faith. Here in Hebrews 11, verse number 4, we have the beginning of patterns of human worship. At the beginning of human worship offered up to God. By faith, Abel was commended here as righteous man. Let's read the verse again. There in Hebrews 11, verse 4, it says, By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. And he believed God. Okay? Uh, that I believe that uh, the, the Lord showed him what he needed to do, and he believed God. I believe that the Lord showed both Cain and Abel. Uh, by, by faith, Abel was commended here as righteous, uh, as a righteous man. Look, look what it says there, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. In other words, his offering up to God that blood sacrifice uh, it showed, gave a witness or a testimony to the fact that he believed God he, and by that he became righteous. God testifying of his gifts and by it he being dead yet speaketh. So um, Abel's story is the beginning of the history of faith. Now, I think it's possible that in Genesis 3, after the fall, there were some elements of faith. For example, Adam saying that Eve would be the mother of all living in Genesis 3.20. He believed that to be the case, and it was. But uh, also there was uh, Adam and Eve uh, trading their fig leaf aprons for God's provision of the coats of skin. Now, they could have just turned down the coats of skin, but they didn't. Uh, it took some faith to, to, to receive that. And also Eve's statement in Genesis 4, 1 that we read, after she gave birth to Cain, she says, I have gotten a man from the Lord. But Genesis 4, verses 3 and 4, point clearly to Cain and Abel showing the beginning of mankind's reaching out to God. What one might call human religion or Humans offering sacrifice to God. But listen, only Abel's sacrifice was acceptable or pleasing to God. Look, look at verse 3 and 4 again of Genesis chapter number 4. It says there in verse 3, And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought the, the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. So uh, this is the beginning of humans reaching up to God, of, of patterns of worship, of offerings up to God. And some may ask, well, how is it that Abel knew to bring an animal, bring a lamb? Uh, how did he know to bring forth the fat portions from some of the firstborn of the flock. We're given all of that information right there that uh, that's what he brought to the Lord. And that's, that is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ is what it is. And um, so it, it appears here, I, I believe that uh, uh, we, we know that Genesis 3.21 tells us that God killed some animals and provided animal skins to cover mankind's nakedness. But so it appears to have established a pattern there uh, of human worship that took over from that point. Now I say that because in the very next chapter, chapter four here, we have an animal sacrifice offered by Abel. Now we see it again in what Noah did, and then again in what Abraham and others are mentioned doing prior to the establishment in the law of God given to Moses. Uh, we're not given the details of where God told them that, but you can be assured that God told them what was acceptable and what was not acceptable. Now, there's an indication right in the text when Cain's offering of the fruit of the ground was rejected by the Lord, 
we, when we see Cain's disappointment, um, Genesis 4 there uh, and verse number uh, 5 says, uh, But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Uh, there was enough knowledge that Cain had that he knew that he had not pleased God with what he brought. And it wasn't just had to do with the didn't have just to do with the rejection, it had to do with what God's command to them was that even though the command's not specifically it's not given to us, we can be assured that he knew uh, that he had done wrong. And so clearly, the Lord was saying to, to him, you didn't do what was right. You did something wrong by bringing me this fruit offering you sent. And so it, it, it is readily apparent that the Lord plainly told Cain and Abel what they were to do God wanted an animal sacrifice and a particular type of animal sacrifice that pointed to Christ. And that's what Abel brought. And he brought that because he believed God. We also know from Romans 10 verse 17 that faith comes from hearing. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Okay, uh, And so as God speaks the Word, then that's what uh, causes faith to spring up in the heart. And so, if it's true that Abel offered by faith the more excellent sacrifice, then it had to be based on some word of the Lord. Amen? Because that's the way it springs up. We don't know how old Cain and Abel were here, but they obviously had reached an age where they were, had both become accountable unto the Lord. That's not a particular age that you reach. It's a, it, it has to do with your understanding of things. Uh, we think of little Aubrey Grace uh, that was just born this week. She's not she's not accountable right now. You know, uh, she'll cry and she'll make you think something's wrong, and it won't be anything wrong. She just uh, spoiled and wants to be picked up. And uh, we're and uh, uh, I know uh, I know that the bakers are real quick to pick her up and and comfort her right now. And so so are so are uh, the Beckleys and. Uh, uh, but but she's not accountable, even, even though she's uh, uh, small like that. But there will come a time, and that's why we pray for all her grace. You know, we want her to grow up to come to know the Lord. Yes. We want her to come up to, to to believe on the Lord, to have faith, because there is going to come a time when she does become accountable to God. But we don't know how old Cain and Abel were. We don't know at what point they became accountable to the Lord, but it was in a process of time. It, you know, they weren't babies here. They weren't uh, little boys here. They, they were, uh, the, the Lord held them responsible for what they knew. <clears throat> Third thing we see here is the key principle is that by faith, Abel was recognized as a righteous man. In other words, his faith was shown by pleasing God with his offering. Understand that faith transforms the heart to obey God. That's why Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. When you hear the Word of God, and the Word of God takes seed in the heart, it causes not only, you, you don't hear it with your ears, but you hear with your heart. You understand in your heart that word uh, when faith comes by hearing. That's not that's not just listening to it with your ears. It's it's you it's you understand it with your heart, hearing by the word of God. Faith transforms the very relationship of the sinner with Almighty God, so that the sinner is made right in the sight of God, and the sinner obeys God. And we see that Abel was a sinner. I mean, he, he just was. And because all men are sinners. All that come from Adam and Eve are sinners. But he knew, he knew that God made a provision. And so there, there's a sense here of a, a two parts. It's on, part of it is on a man and part of it on his work. And the individual comes first. On the man, the, the overriding uh, principle of Scripture here again is there's no way for sinners to be made righteous in the sight of a holy God 
other than by grace through faith. Okay? If you're going to be saved, you're going to be saved by grace through faith, that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, verse number 8 and 9. Now we, to, today we're justified by grace through faith in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But listen, every sinner that has ever lived is justified and was justified only by grace through faith. Abel was justified by grace through faith. He believed God's Word. He trusted God's Word and, and thereby in the, uh, in the Christ who was to come later. And he was uh, justified. And so, so God looked on him with grace. Abel's offering showed his faith in God. Faith transforms the heart to obey God. And that's why he, he heard what God wanted and he brought what God asked for him to bring there in verse of Genesis 4.4. 4. Now, understand on the other side, unbelief causes the heart to act contrary to God's Word. Now, uh, Cain heard with the ears the same thing that, that uh, Abel heard, but it didn't touch his heart. Okay? He didn't hear he heard, but he didn't hear. He heard with his ears, but it did not affect his heart. And God did not look with grace on Cain because of Cain's unbelief. And Cain's unbelief was shown by his offering that was not according to God's word. So God, therefore, uh, did not accept his offering because it was offered apart from faith in God's word. So we have a clear comparison here between these two brothers. And Abel was commended here in Hebrews 11.4 as righteous by his faith that was expressed in his offering of a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. What made it more excellent? It was obedience. <laughs> Amen. It was a more excellent sacrifice. It was according to the Word of God. And God accepting Abel's sacrifice witness he's righteous he's right I, the Lord received it the Lord was pleased with it and by that the Lord was testifying that, that Abel was righteous by faith now in Cain we see a man made religion we have an ungodly man who carried on the outward appearance of religion, but his heart was far from God. I mean, he brought a gift, did he not? He did. He, 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 he wanted to come before God his own way, though. Okay. He didn't come God's way. God's way was with blood. With the blood. And he didn't come God's way. And, and it was a man-made religion. We have a, uh, this ungodly man who, in the outward appearance of religion, uh, he, would, he, he appeared to be doing the right thing, but his heart was far from God. He was a religious innovator, but it was contrary to God's way, and it left him lost. Now, Jude uh, mentions uh, some apostates uh, in his little uh, epistle. He's the half-brother of, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he, in Jude 11... He talked about how the apostates had gone in the way of Cain. In the way of Cain. That's the actual phrase from Jude 11. Cain was an apostate who, in, who no doubt thought God should have accepted his offering, his bloodless offering, in the same way that God accepted Abel's offering. What was that? He reasoned in his heart, reasoned in his mind, well, this just ought to be the way that it is, but it's not the way it is. Uh, he didn't come God's way. The Apostle John wrote in 1 John 3.12 about Cain and said that Cain was of that wicked one. Who's the wicked one? That's Satan. I mean, he's, he was of Satan. And he says he killed his brother Abel. He says the reason he killed Abel because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. That comes from the Apostle John there in 1 John 3.12. Now, in order to offer an appropriate offering to God, Cain would have had to approach his younger brother Abel. I want you to think about this. I mean, he was the tiller of the ground. His brother's the keeper of sheep. 
What did he need? He needed sheep, right? We don't know for sure, but we can imagine from what we know of mankind that pride probably had something to do with him not even considering that. I ain't going to my brother. I mean, my, my little brother at that, okay? And if you got siblings, you know, you know the, we, we, uh, we, we, we can be cruel sometimes. And I had an older brother and a younger brother. Okay? I, was a sec- I was a second born. I was like a boy, second born. But uh, so what should we take away from all this today? How would the Lord have us to apply what we've seen here in the Scriptures this morning? Well, understand, first of all, that nothing you do will ever be acceptable or pleasing to God if you're not first justified by faith. You've got to be justified by faith to please God. Uh, if you've never come to faith in Jesus Christ, if you've never trusted in Him as your Lord and Savior, nothing that you uh, do will ever be pleasing to God until you do that thing. You, you have to do that first. You have to have faith in God first. You have to trust in Jesus. We come to Jesus in God's way. We don't come the way that we think of in our heart, reason in our heart, well, this ought to be okay with God. You, know? you can't do that. That's the way of Cain. Um, understand that if you are justified by faith, that faith will be shown in what you do. Okay? Abel was not Abel was not saved by his works, but his works manifested that he had faith. Okay. But, uh, I, I mentioned a while ago. Uh, well, I'll mention the, the, the verses here again in just a moment. I've got to get a little ahead of myself here. Um, righteous people will seek to do righteous things that are in accordance with God's word and in accordance with them having been justified by faith. In other words, if you're truly justified by faith, we ought to be able to see it in your life. Ephesians 2, verse 8 through 10. I mentioned verse 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But I didn't mention verse 10. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And so it's according to the will of God that we walk in good works. It's not the good works that save us, it's the faith that saves us, but it's a faith that, that brings forth works. And that's what James was getting at in James 2, verse 17. He was not saying that works save. <clears throat> he was saying that works show what, what kind of faith you have. He said, even so... If it hath not works, it's dead. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Understand that if you are not justified by faith, but walking in your own ways, like Cain, that will also be shown in what you do. Okay? Abel's faith was shown by what he did. Cain's lack of faith, his unbelief, was shown in what he did. Unrighteous people will do unrighteous things that are in accordance with their own ungodly soul. Okay? The person that's a, a person of faith does according to God's Word. The person that is unrighteous does things according to their own reasoning. Jesus addressed the religious crowd in John 8, 44. And He told them, said, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. And, and that's, the, that's the way of the lost. And they follow uh, someone other than God. And uh, they will do the lust of the flesh. 1 John 3, verse 12, and we'll quote it again. It says, We're not to be, not, he says, Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. So, Again, we get the principle there that unrighteous people do unrighteous things. They do. So this morning, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? I trust that you do, but if, you, if not, there's no better time than the present. Come to know the Jesus today. Um, you can have faith. Uh, the Lord has given us everything we know. I mean, aren't you glad we got the entire Word of God? We got the whole book. <laughs> you know, we, 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 this is a great dispensation we live in. 
to have the whole book. And but with with that whole book comes uh, responsibility. You know, to whom much is given, much is required. And so we know we know a lot of what God expects of us. But the question is, are we doing it? And and so let's get busy doing uh, what the Lord has called for us to do. Amen. And if you're not saved today, come to a saving knowledge of Him. We can help you with that. If you do, you'll come, we'll we'll talk to you in private and show you how you can know that. Let's pray, Father. We thank you for.